Good morning from Wellington. Today I'm going to be taking a very short triple uh, seven hop over to Auckland using the fantastic um, All Blacks livery created by John Tavendale, one of the best repainters out there. And since I'm on the U U.S. East Coast, this is morning time in New Zealand, and I have a couple of hours before bedtime, so I want to just enjoy a nice, quick, short flight as I continue to explore this fantastic uh, PMDG released of the Triple Seven. Okay, so from the flight deck, we're gonna get our alignment started. I already went to the dispatch on Simbrief to get our flight plan, so we're going to just request it here. Here in Wellington we'll be taking off to the south, and in Lusik in uh, Auckland we'll be landing to the southwest. And the flight plan has us out of runway 16 here and landing runway 23 left in Auckland. Beyond ATC connected. Okay, I was just making uh, some adjustments uh, for my coloring to, to just get a more realistic appearance. Uh, I, I've been playing around with some filters. The output you might be seeing on YouTube might be a lot different than what I'm seeing on my screen, but I'm trying to get something on, on my screen that I really like, that, that really feels bold, very realistic in terms of colors, shadows. So I've been watching a lot of great videos on how to make some good filters on, on NVIDIA. So again, I'm, I'm also using uh, a, a Samsung 50-inch curved display. Um, and from what I've seen from my perspective, again, it's a very sharp picture, very close to the real world. But I'm well aware that it might show up washed out or in, in, in different, either too dark or too light shades uh, once it's on YouTube. But trust me, uh, I have it uh, on the best setting right now at least for my taste, uh, the way I see it on my screen. Okay, um, we are gonna go ahead and... Uh, oh, let me use the new mode. As many of you are well aware, we are... Uh, all of us who are PNG flyers are transitioning from the 737 to the 777 in, in many ways, and that also means remembering some of the new options, like being able to have the tablet in, in our thing, as they aptly called the hand. For those of you who are old enough to remember thing. Uh, okay, let's get um, this pass over to the FMC. So I guess uh, this is my 13th flight on the 777 
in the past seven days just based on the number of saved flight plans that I saw we'll get the route loaded up confirm our position for the alignment and we have two minutes ten seconds until alignment and now let's do our performance while we wait oh one more forecast Same brief has us on at Vev one Quebec transitioning on Russell arriving runway two three left Davy seven Charlie. Okay, performance. As we mentioned, it's runway 16. Aircraft data imported. Weather imported. It's going to have us using no assumed air temperature. Rated takeoff. Flaps 5. We'll confirm center of gravity. And the data should be very close. We have 144 on the tablet. 144 here on the FMC, that's fine for V1. 153 rotation. 168 V2. And the length of our flight plane is 300 nautical miles.
we'll plug our tablet back in. Also got an airport map here just to get our bearings. Okay, I'm going to be using Beyond ATC. As many of you are aware, we have a new COM function here uh, with the 777. You, you can uh, connect to uh, VAT, SemiVeo, PMDG to get information. And it's going to be very similar to what SimBrief and to what ActiveSky are providing. But when you get a letter designation for the information, it's going to be different across all four systems so I'm gonna go with wh what Beyond ATC ha has so for example if Beyond ATC says information whiskey I'm gonna use information whiskey because I've, I've tried to dial them in at the same time and I've had PMDG say Papa Beyond ATC say whiskey uh, that seems say alpha so, so so they're not consistent QNH1004, landing and departing runway 16, transition level 150, advise on initial contact, you have information echo. Wellington Airport information echo, 0022 Zulu, wind 1. Okay, it looks like there are, there are going to be no altitude restrictions on the way up. And we are going to be doing a 32,000 foot cruise for this very short flight. I'm going to go ahead and set that now. One thing I mentioned already is, um, or I mentioned in previous videos, I'm coming up to 737 and figuring out where the things are on, on the 777 are, is pretty easy. I was flying the 777 uh, three years ago with P3D, so I haven't forgotten much of that. But the handling is indeed different, as expected. But also on the 737, I spoiled myself by having the FS2 crew first officer handle their flows while I was doing my flows. So I gotta remember now that I'm responsible for all flows, so I might forget a few things. But this is my 13th flight, I I'm getting more and more comfortable with each flight, just not forgetting those things. Wellington Delivery, Air New Zealand, 773 Heavy, with information echo, ready to copy IFR to Auckland. New Zealand 773 Heavy, Wellington Delivery, thanks for information echo. Expect runway 16, active 1 Quebec departure, with the Russell transition, initial climb to 6,000 feet, squawk 5406. Expect Roman 16 at V1 Quebec departure. Russell transition, initial climb to 6000, squawk 5406, New Zealand, 773 heavy. New Zealand 773 heavy. Read back correct. Contact ground 121 decimal minor. When ready for pushback or engine start. 121 decimal minor when ready. New Zealand, 773 Heavy. Negative ground on.
Okay, let's get our hydraulics all set. Wait for the fault light to go off. Okay, and we'll put the rest on. Now we have hydraulic fluid to set the parking brake. I just need to open up my FSU IPC profile so I can set my parking brake with my throttle quadrant and my pedals. Let me see. Now we should be able to do it. Let's see. Press the pedals and pull this brake handle. Yep. Okay. Those are all set. Pre-flight checklist completed. Now, another feature that I'm really happy with is having door management straight from the tablet. Not just door, door management, but also all the connections. We'll go ahead and close passenger door and get the cargo doors closed as well and now we can arm all the doors cabin crew arm doors and now we can get our pushback from GSX Let's see what ground says, whether it's nose right or nose left. Good morning, Wellington Ground, New Zealand, 773 Heavy, request push and start. New Zealand, 773 Heavy, Wellington Ground, push back approved, face west. Approved, face west, New Zealand, 773 Heavy. Okay, so to face west, um, we're going to need nose left. Or oh, I'm sorry, nose right to face west, nose right, okay. Okay, the jet bridge has been pushed back. So doors closed and locked. MCP has confirmed V2168 heading 160, flight level 330 for altitude and the takeoff speeds are also entered in the tablet and the FMC confirmed and cross check with each other. CDU prefect completed. We need trim 4 for takeoff. Trim 4 is set. Okay, before start complete. Locking gear. Okay, the sequence is right engine, then left engine. We'll go right engine start and auto start here. And we're going to monitor oil pressure.
Right engine stable, starting left engine. Oil pressure. Okay, flight controls. Flight controls check complete. Recall. Checked. Auto brake RTO. Wellington ground. New Zealand, 773 Heavy, request taxi, runway 16 right. New Zealand, 773 Heavy, runway 16 taxi via Bravo 5, Alpha, Alpha 2. Runway 16 via Bravo 5, Alpha, Alpha 2. New Zealand, 773 Heavy. Okay, clear for taxi. Laps five. Laps 5 before takeoff checklist complete.
Tower on 118, decimal 8, New Zealand 773 heavy. Wellington Tower, New Zealand, 773 Heavy, ready for departure, runway 16. New Zealand, 773 Heavy, Wellington Tower, wind 165 at 19, runway 16, cleared for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 16, New Zealand, 773 Heavy. This is what I was talking about, not having a first officer anymore. I forgot to turn my taxi light on <laughs> before taxi. So again, just weaning off some of the bad habits I picked up with the 777. Well, not bad habits, I just picked up the habits of handling the pick flows while the PNF does the other flows. So let's get rolling. We saw somebody just land. Once they clear the runway, we'll be get going. We'll verify all lights on. I'm going to turn off the APU as well. Cabin crew is ready. And the Air New Zealand Airbus cleared the runway already, so we're good to go. One more look outside. It's a pretty nice morning. There's gonna be rain showers during the entire flight, man. So that's why there are some rainbows and clouds. But it's still a very nice morning. Nice sunrise. So let's get going. Uh, I'm gonna use the timer here for takeoff to landing. So right now it's 48 zero zero 48 Zulu, expecting to be on the ground at 0135 Zulu. Squawk 5406, New Zealand 773 Heavy. Two two decimal three New Zealand seven seven three heavy. Negative Wellington departure. Good morning Wellington departure New Zealand seven seven three heavy passing flight level six thousand. New Zealand seven seven three heavy Wellington departure. Good day identified 
Climb to one five thousand feet. Laps one. Time to one five thousand feet. New Zealand seven seven three heavy. Flaps up. I'm going to stay manual for a few more minutes, just want to continue to get a good feel for the aircraft. It handles so well, but I still tend to make some more 737 specific movements, and this one doesn't require as many movements for sure. Uh, my yoke is experiencing a little bit of noise, I've mentioned this in previous videos. I have a, a very great yoke, which is the Thrustmaster TCA. But unfortunately, the insulation is not the best, so that's why my yoke, right now I'm not touching it, but it's dancing a little bit, so it causes this little rolling to the left and right sometimes, so I just gotta keep my eye on it. Ten thousand. Lights out. Center on 119 or decimal 2, New Zealand 773 heavy. New Zealand Center, New Zealand 773 heavy, passing flight level 130. Transition set standard. New Zealand 773 Heavy, New Zealand Centre, radar contact, climb to flight level 310. Climb to flight level 310, New Zealand 773 Heavy. Yeah, the manual handling is definitely wonderful. I'm a little bit above my uh, pitch, so that's why I'm only at 260. I should be at 320. So I'm going to just turn the autopilot on and let it take over and speed me up. But it is wonderful handling. I'm very happy with that part of the airplane as well. And let's update our cruise to 310 per the ATC direction. Can turn off the lower screen. Zoom out a little bit and we turn the weather radar on, see if we got any returns right now. I mentioned it's been, yeah, there are some returns. The entire route has uh, showers, light showers. There, uh, I didn't see any intense precipitation during this patch. So I can zoom in a little bit too to look at the returns. Most of you are familiar with the whole radar. Uh, weather radar. Not so much of a controversy, but where we are in development. Uh, so this is the closest thing to a functional weather radar that we have right now. A Sobo finally provide. Well, I think they have been uh, talking about how to provide data, and maybe PMDD was reluctant to provide a weather radar that, that was not entirely accurate. But I think visually, it's not too bad to have and I had it on earlier today during some very in intense thunderstorms in Mumbai and the returns were green with yellow red uh, so it, this they seem pretty good but I know it's missing some of the realism such as a three-dimensional aspect and me being able to tilt my radar up and down for, for an even more accurate location 
but again um, slowly but surely we'll get there we're also missing the windshield effects whenever the wipers are on uh, we had those in P3D and according to uh, Rob w during his live stream he said that uh, a Sobo is actually going to work on that functionality to get us some uh, realistic windshield effects rather than the P PMD Rainmaker that was used in P3D so we have 40 minutes of flight time left it's going to be a quick one like I said some time to just look at the tablet here uh, I can do my dispatch calculation here before I do my in route one and I can do this on the ground too before takeoff it's actually required by some SOPs if I recall correctly and we're going to do flaps 25 into Wellington yeah we're within parameters so the next part that we'll do is the in route. So auto brakes two, flaps twenty five. That will make us use eight thousand of ten thousand feet in the runway. That will minimize stress on the brakes as well if I put it on level two instead of level 3 so we, we should have plenty of distance uh, for slowing down and we can just do a quick outside look as well And I was measuring the communications capabilities here. I'm hoping that maybe they can, uh, you know, you notice I mentioned earlier they have VATSIM, Iveo, and PMDG here for requests. Uh, if PMDG can talk to Beyond ATC and we can get their frequency, uh, well, well, their their data, uh, then we can have the the proper letter designators for information when contacting clearance and arrival uh, and approach for example so if I go to my route here uh, if I want to get the PMD data PMD pulls data from the National Oceanics and Atmospheric Administration here in the US so my route is all I have to do is just uh, click on my November Zulu Alpha Alpha designator for Auckland and then click on the screen here PMDG will be my source and then I can send my command and we can also compare it to what SimBrief is giving us in the meantime I'll set my uh, approach Be 25159. So I was going to say we can look at it what, what uh, is being forecasted by Simbrief. Simbrief has Auckland uh, winds 260 at 22 knots. To have unlimited visibility, QNH 1009er, and PMDG has two sixty at twenty two, 
unlimited visibility, temperature 1.5, dew point 9, QNH 1009, so it's identical. So, uh, again, I as I was saying earlier, uh, the only inconsistency would be, for example, if I, if I were to contact Auckland Approach right now, and I say uh, Air New Zealand 773, or New Zealand 773 with information Bravo, uh, beyond it is going to have a different le letter designator, so it's going to make me repeat the request with uh, the correct letter. But again, this is more functionality, closer to the real world, to get this kind of... Uh, requests and once I'm happy with my report here on my screen I can always cancel it Yeah, so maybe if PMD you consider some kind of integration with Beyond NTC to make this more functional. Obviously, for those of you who use uh, Iveo VATS, you're going to be very happy already. For those of us who don't, um, it, it would be nice to add additional functionality. Let me go ahead and turn this off. For those of you who want to get more uh, knowledge of, of the 777 for PMDG, I recommend Emmy's videos. A a Emmy's uh, handle is Real A330 Pilot. He was previously 737NG driver, and but he transitioned to A330 in, in his actual real-world airline. But Emmy knows this a PMDG aircraft and, and those of other developers inside and out, and, out, and he's, he provides some very, very good videos on YouTube that I like to tune into and see what I can learn as well. So what I'm going to do just to save uh, some video space and some upload time, I'll pause and return once we are descending into Auckland. We will be at top of descent in 90 nautical miles. So once I'm in the flight level 250 and below, maybe flight level 200 and below, I'll, I'll re-engage and we'll continue our flight. And we'll leave a quick outside view here. and see you during descent. Okay, we're back making our initial descent to flight level 130 as assigned by New Zealand Center. 
and we'll be handed over to approach her very soon. In the meantime, I'm just gonna draw a fix or two around Auckland just to get into the habit. I'm gonna do a 30 nautical mile and a 10 nautical mile. Doing the fixes as Emmy was explaining in one of his videos is just going to give you a lot more situation awareness. He also recommended using the shades a lot because obviously we are flying at very high altitude. The sun is a lot more intense, not good for our skin, not good for our eyes, but also right now the, the sunrise is still casting off the water very strongly, so it's almost blinding. So even though it's not as intense on a simulator com compared to the real world, this is just another ha habit to get into as to how people would fly the plane in real life. We're pushing 13,000. QNH 1009 a landing and departing runway 23 left transition level 1505 5G notice in effect advise on initial contact you have information alpha Auckland Airport information alpha 0052 Zulu wind 240 at 22 temperature 15 dew point 09 at QNH 1009 a landing and departing runway 23 left Transition level 1505G notice in effect. Advise on initial contact. Auckland approach. New Zealand 773 heavy with information alpha. Passing flight level 130 for flight level 8000. New Zealand 773. Heavy Auckland approach, QNH1 0 0 9 Expect radar vectors for ILS runway 2, tree left. QNH1 0 0 9 expect radar vectors for ILS runway 2, tree left, New Zealand 773 heavy. New Zealand 773 heavy, descend to 9000 feet, QNH1 0 0 9 Descent to 9000 QNH 1009 -er, New Zealand 773 Heavy. For those of you unfamiliar with Beyond ETC, uh, the vectoring is hit and miss. Sometimes it can be really tight accurate, other times it can be all over the place and take you far away from the airport. 
uh, one user reported being taken straight into a mountain so keep that in mind but I'll also New Zealand 773 heavy descend to 3000 feet descend to 3000 feet New Zealand 773 heavy I was saying uh, I'll make my own decision as to whether or not to follow these radar vectors if they look good, I'll follow them. If not, I'm just going to follow my track. I will not be penalized for disobeying their turn, their vectoring instructions. And again, pretty decent weather return. Uh, I mentioned there's going to be showers during the entire flight plan, during the entire flight path. And this resembles showers, light to moderate showers, n nothing intense. Gonna use some air brakes here and do flight level change at 240. Let's see how quickly the plane slows down. And again, no co-pilot, so let's get me let's get our lights on. I'm gonna lift the visor for a few minutes, let's see how it looks. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the terrain radar on on my first officer's side. New Zealand 773, heavy leave ESNAX, heading 045, expect radar vectors for ILS, runway 23 left. Leave ESNAX, heading 045, expect radar vectors for ILS, runway 23 left, New Zealand 773 heavy. New Zealand 773, heavy, turn right, heading 045, vectors for the approach. Turn right, heading 045, vector for the approach, New Zealand 773, heavy.
New Zealand 773 Heavy, turn right, heading 050. Turn right, heading 050, New Zealand 773 Heavy. New Zealand 773 Heavy, turn right, heading 055. Turn right, heading 055, New Zealand 773 Heavy. Flaps 1. New Zealand 773, heavy, turn left, heading 335. Turn left, heading 335, New Zealand 773, heavy. New Zealand 773 Heavy, 9 miles from MRAG, turn left, heading 270, maintain 3,000 feet, until established on the final approach course, cleared ILS runway 2 tree left. Turn left, heading 270, maintain 3,000 until established ILS runway 2 tree left, New Zealand 773 Heavy. I need to work a little bit on descent management with the 777. This airplane definitely loves to fly. It's hard to get it to come down. Okay, we have glide slope capture, just waiting to be established, and we are established. Auckland approach, New Zealand 773 heavy established. New Zealand 773 heavy, roger. Flaps 5. 
I'm not sure why I got a few imbalance, but I went ahead and turned on the pause feed. I mean, haven't seen this happen in ages. Okay, verifying all the lights are on. And we are entering the 10 nautical mile ring. And New I can see Zealand, the runway lights. Contact Auckland Tower 118 decimal 7. Auckland Tower 118 decimal 7. New Zealand 773 heavy. Bye bye. Auckland Tower, New Zealand 773 heavy. Inbound ILS runway 23 left. New Zealand 773 heavy. Auckland Tower. Continue. Continue, New Zealand 773 Heavy. 2500. Gear down. Flaps 15. Flaps 20. Flaps 25. New Zealand 773 heavy wind 240 at 22, runway 23 left cleared to land. Runway 23 left cleared to land, New Zealand 773 heavy. I guess this is a good opportunity to test the automation on landing. I was thinking I was going to get runway visual contact a lot sooner. But this, uh, yeah, this rain shower is right on top of us and it's really reduced the, the visibility. So again, it's pretty good depiction on the weather radar, can't complain. That approach is a bit off. 100, 50, 30, 20, 10. Okay, speed break up.
reverse normal. And ignore the AI. Manual braking. New Zealand seven seven three heavy, exit right at Alpha One Zero. Exit right Alpha One Zero, New Zealand seven seven three heavy. Okay to clean up. New Zealand seven seven three heavy contact ground one two one decimal nine. Going to ground on one two one decimal nine New Zealand seven seven three heavy. Okay, brakes are cool, that was good brake usage. I'm gonna go ahead and park in the international terminal. Let's see what ground suggests. Good morning, Auckland ground, New Zealand 773 heavy. Taxi gate two. New Zealand seven seven three heavy. Welcome to Auckland Airport gate two taxi via Alpha Niner Alpha Juliet. Gate two via Alpha Niner Alpha Alpha Bravo Alpha Niner Juliet. And I'll also double check that the GSX has runway, I'm sorry, gate 2 available. It's available soon, so maybe we'll go to gate 3. Let's go to gate 3, that's fine. And I just verified the gate's location before we get going. Okay, so Alpha 3 will be on the west side of the terminal. And that's very close to where we are. Alright, so we're going to taxi on Alpha, as ground suggested. And I can turn the wipers down. Good, the APU started as well.
Okay, I'm hoping this get assignment doesn't make me clip wings with the Air Airbus. Let's see what happens. I know it's an AI aircraft, but I want to realistically align my aircraft so as not to touch wings. Okay, taxi off. And cabin crew disarm doors. Yeah, we are gonna touch wings. Okay. It's AI, so I guess I guess we can ignore it. Okay, brakes. Okay, chalks on, brakes off. And we'll get some external air and turn the packs off to finish our secure checklist. Make sure our beacon's off as well. That should be all. So we got the gate docked and we see unloading going on. Great. So this was a. Um, Wellington to Auckland, a very short hop on a big airplane today, just to take advantage of this great new release from PMDG. I'm going to verify if my 2L is open because I don't hear any passengers chattering. I'm, I'm running a 
oh I haven't opened it no wonder so if I open the door oh one thing I noticed on the tablet the mouse controls are not as responsive so I find myself clicking multiple times so I think I clicked something and got something to happen but nothing happened so let me click open one more time okay now I open and now I can hear the passengers and the flight crew I mean the cabin crew talking to each other okay great so again welcome to Auckland thank you for watching please do enjoy this airplane this airplane is fantastic I only feel sorry for my 737 I don't think I'll be flying it for a little while while I get to know this big sibling a little better and as many of you know uh, PNDG is going to incorporate a lot of the improvements into the 737 such as having the ground operations and the door management being managed from the tablet as opposed to from the F FMC and the weather overlay as well on the radar so I'm looking forward to those incorporations into the 737NG also looking forward to the 737 MAX release which will happen between 777 releases the next 777 release for our PMDG will be the freighter version which I also look forward to flying a lot because I'm going to get a lot of around the world flying wi with some of the big uh, airlines like DHL FedEx and many of its contract operators just to name a few so um, we'll see you in the next flight take care